Okay, so hello and welcome back to another UNCC Sharp Bytesize tutorial. In today's video, we'll be covering extension methods as a way to reuse useful functions between multiple Unity projects. I hope you're looking forward to it. Let's get started. So for the first part, I'll explain what an extension method is and why you might want to use one. So if we go and look at a class built into Unity, such as the game object class or the rigid body or the transform, just some class built into Unity that you use a lot, okay? You might write some methods. For example, um, in here, there's add component, okay? And then there's also get component. Now the problem is, what if you want to write your own method? Okay, you can't add it to here, you can't edit the source code. You might want to write your own method that you can reuse all the time uh, with this. So maybe, for example, you want to have a method that lets you get or add a component. So you do game object dot get or add component, and then you tell it the type of component you want to get or add. And then what we need to do is we just need to say, uh, try and get the component off it. If it does exist, then just return that. Otherwise, add a new one on and then return that one. Okay, now that's some logic that if you didn't write an extension method for, uh, and then you wanted to use it, let's say, 10 places in your project, then you'd have to rewrite it 10 times. It's something that ideally would be in here, but obviously you can't edit this. So we have to write an extension method. So let's make the extension method. Now, two of the things I'm going to be using for this method, I won't have covered before. So if you guys want your own video in this kind of style on statics or generics, which I'll be covering in a minute, then I'll do a separate video on that. So I'll quickly uh, breeze over them today. You know, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but basically put your extension methods in a separate class. Make sure that class is a public static class. And I've called mine extension methods. You could also make multiple classes where each class is, you know, whatever it's about. So transform extensions, uh, game object extensions, rigid body extensions, so on. And then what we need to do here is we need to say, okay, we'll make a method. This is our extension method, public. It's also static. Um, I'll explain statics in a separate video if you want. I'll just ignore it for now. And then uh, what type do we return? So it might be void or string or bool, but because we're adding a component, uh, we actually don't know what that component's going to be. As I said, it could be a rigid body, a transform, you know, it could be your own component. So we'll actually just say T. So we're going to use T to mean whatever type they want, T for type. Okay, that's generics, and I'll explain that in a separate video. And we're going to call this method get or add component. Okay. And then here is where I say the type. So um, basically, this T is the same as this T here. And this I'll explain when we actually use the method. Okay, um, now for a an extension method, the first parameter needs to be whatever type um, your component is. Oh, sorry, your, uh, whatever type you're calling this on. So we're calling this on a game object. We're going to say game object dot get or add component. So we have to say this game object. Okay, and then finally we have to put some kind of constraint on this because right now this T could be literally any type. It could be whatever, but we need to constrain it to be a component. We can only get or add components. So we'll say where, whoops, if I can type where, where t is a component. Okay, I'll zoom out a little bit. So public static, it returns t. So basically, whatever t is, is what it returns. Um, now, if we actually go over here and just do an example. So if I say, um, let's make a start method, and we'll say game object dot get or add component. This is our method here. Okay. Now notice how um, you know, when you add a component normally, you pass in a type like this. So let's say um, rigid body. Okay, we'll add a rigid body. Okay, notice how we ask for a parameter here, but here we don't have to put one in. That's because we've done this game object. So that actually refers to this. It already knows what we're on about. And then this T that we keep referring to, T, is a rigid body. Okay, if I put in something here that wasn't a component, then it wouldn't allow me to do so. But now we just need to write the actual logic and then make sure to return t. So return whatever it is they're coming in. So if it's a rigid body coming in, we have to return a rigid body. If it's a transform, we return a transform and so on. So we're going to say, well, if the game object we're calling this on has the component, so let's say t. Okay, this is the requested component. So we're saying if they have the requested component, then return the requested component. Okay, now it's even telling us here because it knows uh, already about this type, we can just simplify the name. Okay, so all we have to do here is this is if it doesn't have the component on, then we need to add it. So we'll say return game object dot add component t. Okay, like so. And now we've made this method. Now this is roughly, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six lines. Yeah, you could bring it down if you, you know, took out this. But the point is, this is 
code that if you wanted to use in different places, you'd have to keep rewriting it. But now we've got this method and it exists, we can do it wherever we want. So if I want to um, ever on a game object get or add a component, then this is what it runs, okay? And we've just written this once. You can then reuse this code in other projects, okay? You could put this into a package and just reuse it in your different Unity projects, okay? Um, now we can actually give it a test. Okay, so the player is floating above the ground. If I press play, it's actually going to add the rigid body to it, okay? Now it's not unusual for you to write your own methods. Obviously, one of the main things you're doing while you're programming is writing your own classes, writing your own methods, but this is a way to write a method for a class that you actually can't modify or that you didn't write yourself. Okay, so obviously we can't modify game objects, components, transforms, but you can write extension methods on top of them and it's quite useful. Um, and as I said earlier, you can reuse this across multiple projects. And one other quick example in case you want to see something that's useful, uh, let's say public static void, so we don't want to return anything, uh, destroy children for a transform, okay? Because this isn't built in, but I think it's quite useful, uh, unless someone knows an easy way to do it. But anyway, we need to uh, say loop, so for each transform, whoops, transform child in transform, um, game object dot destroy child dot game object. The reason we can't just say destroy is because destroy is normally a method in a game object class and we're not inside a game object. Now if we did it up here inside a mono behavior that is part of a game object so we can actually do it. Uh, we instead uh, just simplify this down to whoops come on intelligence there we go. So we're going to say loop over all the children and destroy the game objects. So then now if we actually want to test that all we need to do is go up here and say transform dot destroy children. Go back into unity let's actually give the player uh, some child game objects so one two three okay and we press play and then they all get destroyed okay so this was a quick video on extension methods i hope you guys see the use in it feel free to go start making your own let me know down below any really useful ones you've made feel free to look around on google i found quite a few useful ones on the forum pages for unity so yeah if you like the video please leave a like and subscribe let me know down below what you want to see next thanks everyone for watching i'll see you guys next time and goodbye but of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. Special thanks to John Selig, Liz Kimber, Drandy, Jim Ran, Dewey McDermott, Exit, Josh Folsom, Beard or Die, Dustin Miller, Rec, Yoris Letter, Rene, and Rumi Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help us out by following on any of those, checking any of those out, that'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.